Good evening, everyone. If you're like me, then you loved watching ghost hunting shows as a kid. Shows like Ghost Hunters and Ghost Adventures and the like. Something always intrigued me about these shows, however, and that's the equipment they use to capture quote unquote proof of the paranormal. Stuff like EMF detectors, spirit boxes, and REM pods. But can you actually trust any of these devices to give you good proof of the paranormal? This is something to, I aim to find out in this new series I'm calling Spirit Science. Today's focus will be on the EMF detector. You hear it all the time on these shows that ghosts are supposedly made of electromagnetic fields, or EMF. EMF detectors measure electromagnetic energy, something ghosts are said to give off. The way it works in these shows is a ghost or spirit comes close to the detector, and it goes off. The higher the detector goes, the closer the entity is, or how powerful the entity is. I'm actually not quite sure. It's never explained in the shows what the detector going off is supposed to mean. Either way, it goes off, and that means you've got ghosts. I will be testing out the EMF detector in my own home to see what it does. Now, you might be wondering, hey, does that mean your house is haunted? Well, to my knowledge, no. No, it's not. So then, why am I testing this out in my house instead of an actual haunted location? Simple. This is an experiment that we're running, and every good experiment requires a control. We've seen the EMF detector do its job on haunted locations, but we're never shown what one does in a location with no report of paranormal activity. And why would they show us that? That doesn't make for good television. But I'm going to operate on a simple hypothesis of mine. If I take this device through my non-spirit infested home, and it goes crazy, Maybe this isn't actually good at detecting ghosts. All right, we're here in the testing phase. I have my EMF reader turned on. This isn't one, however, that makes like the loud beeping noise when it goes off, we're just, so we're just gonna have to watch the, um, the lights up here. But let's go ahead and try and contact some spirits. Is there anyone in this room who'd like to communicate? If there is, Make the lights on this device in my hand blink. And got like a like a little blip there, a little tiny one there. <laughs> um, spirits who have passed on, if there's something you'd like to say. Go ahead and let me know by lighting up the lights on this device in my hand. I'm asking any spirits in this room who wish to communicate, light up the lights here on this device. Please, let me know that you're here. I've got plenty of devices in this, in this room. You can pull power from one of them. You can pull power from my camera, from my light, from my computer over there on the other side of the room, anything. Pull power from anything. Make yourself strong enough for me to contact you. Don't be shy, come forward. You could even pull power from the device in my hand. It's got a battery in it. You could pull power from it if you'd like. Oh, shit. <laughs> there we go. 
Don't take it as anything, by the way. This thing's kind of cheap, unless you're putting like pressure on the battery where it connects, uh, it shuts off. So that's probably what just happened right there. Yeah, I'm getting nothing here. It's got some blips here. A little tiny bit of blips there. But I do have a lot of technology in this room. So I think that could definitely be causing it. I'm trying to keep it far away from like, from outside influence, but I'm getting nothing. Oh well. As you can see, I didn't really get any intelligent responses in my session using the EMF detector. I got a few small little blimps, but other than that, not much. Which is to be expected. As stated before, there were no known hauntings in my place of residence. That is... So I thought. I decided to try the EMF detector in other places in my house. Perhaps my office just isn't a room with activity. This is what I found walking into the bathroom upstairs. Okay, I was just taking it um, around my house to see if I could find anything. I started getting some blimps here. I'm gonna go in here. It really starts going off. But it didn't stop there. I then went into the master bedroom. Oh man, I'm getting the same thing in here. Look at this. Jeez. I couldn't believe what I was seeing, and that's when I made a shocking realization. In both rooms, the EMF detector seemed the most active around one side of each room. The side of the room facing the one space separating the two rooms. The hall closet. Okay, pinpointing it seems to really, really go off next to this closet. After making this discovery, I did some research at my house and discovered something that our realtor failed to mention is that there was, in fact, a death on the premises. In 1968, there was a family who lived here in my house. Jack Murphy, his wife Linda, and their three kids. Jack and Linda had a terribly messy divorce due to Jack's alcohol addiction and abusive tendencies. Linda was granted full custody of their two sons and daughter after a court ruled that Jack was an unfit father. Distraught at the loss of his children and his failed marriage, Jack decided that he couldn't handle it anymore and ended his life in that hall closet. Is what I would say if this were a ghost hunting show, but it's not. This is a show dedicated to finding the truth. That story I just told you is completely fabricated. That picture is just what I found on Google when I typed in 80s family. And the real reason why the detector was going off in front and near the hall closet was because that closet holds our equipment for our internet and my home server. All of which give off high EMF. And I did find other places around my home where the detector went off, but usually around something like a light switch or some kind of appliance. Surprisingly, I got the highest readings around one of our air purifiers. But how does this explain readings in places where there might not be working power to give false readings? Well, one of the beliefs in the world of paranormal research is that hauntings can be made stronger when they exist near large bodies of water, specifically running water. But what they don't tell you is that running water has a slight electromagnetic charge. This is why when you hold a magnet to a running faucet, it will bend the stream slightly. And also why when I hold the detector near a running source of water, it sets the detector off. Another explanation could be something called solar flares. Sometimes our sun can have eruptions of electromagnetic radiation. This radiation hits the earth anywhere from once or twice a week to several times a day and can be strong enough to strip electronic devices. So I don't think it's out of the realm of possibility that they could be strong enough to set off an EMF detector. But of course, footage of an EMF detector responding to requests and questions can be edited to be more convincing. Is there anyone here? 
or wishes to communicate, please light up those lights on that device on the table, please. But of course, that is just what I think. Let me know what you think in the comments below. And thank you for watching.